two guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. Write this down. Write that down. Write it down. You like writing things down. Write them down. It's like a, like a personal contract with ourselves. Yes, welcome into the OG edition of Write That Down. I think the OG edition started in 2015, I want to say. And we have statistics going back to 2018. Write that down. The only show in America for years and years that has the stones to put statistics next to our predictions. When are you going to admit it that you were wrong, Judd? So, so we spent three years making predictions but not tracking them. Well, I think we – so we, we did? Ch- I feel like we definitely had a phase where we just like – Actually, this is a fun little history lesson because the write that down segment started off as advice to local sports teams. So it was like, hey, Timberwolves, write this down. Be better at drafting or whatever. And then we would do like a a talker sort of. It was like a benchmark kind of classic radio crutch, you know. Uh, and then it kind of turned into predictions. And so we were making predictions every single week. Mm hmm. And I don't remember how long it was between when we would make predictions before we started actually keeping a database of statistics. Okay. But it was like a, a year maybe. And then I feel like we have some statistics too that, that are lost in the archives. Because I'm pretty sure we really? we tracked some stats in like 2016, 17. But I may have like, I think I may have like deleted. Oh, we got done with the year and I may have like deleted the 2016 year. And then now we're doing 2017. Okay. And I didn't think to keep all of the historical stats until like 2017, 18. So there's an archive that's lost to the uh, ages. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if we can go back in like the, because it's an Excel spreadsheet that goes back. We have tabs going back like seven years. (laughs) We need to have someone pull all the shows and go back and listen to them all and track it. We do, by the way, we do have all of the shows we've done in MP3 form. I mean, obviously on the podcast, but I have like an external hard drive with all of the shows we did on 1500 ESPN radio from like 2014 through 2018. So yeah, there you go. Well, uh, maybe Declan can sort through those. Yeah. Like a, like a twins off day. You just need someone with a lot of time, a <laughs> lot of time. Oh boy. Oh boy. By the way, before we get into the accountability session here right now up for grabs in the score North app. You can win tickets. This is right up my alley to the icons of rock <laughs> arena, rock legends featuring the biggest arena rock tribute band playing all the hits at Medina entertainment center. That's my old backyard, man. Medina. There. I saw uh, th- the shows there. This Saturday night from kiss to Alice Cooper, heart, Def leopard, the icons of rock oh, wow. are a must see show. Tickets on sale now at MedinaEntertainment.com. Uh, you can also register to win a pair of tickets right now in the listener rewards area of the Score North app on your phone. So uh, there's also a stay and play package for Meadows at Mystic Lake up for grabs and gift cards to Chipotle on the app. So Ooh, check it out. I'd like some of those. Uh, it, it's been so long since I've been to a show at the Medina Ballroom that the last time I, I was there, I saw Johnny Lang. As kid, oh, wow. Johnny Lang. Wow. Before he, before he was blown up. Before he was a man, he oh, was I just a you. kid. Yeah. He was phenomenal. He was man. absolutely phenomenal, but that's a long time ago. One of my favorites, so I, I dabble in some country. I, I, I literally go from like, I played in a Dixieland jazz band in high school to over to yeah. like, I'll listen to metal and rap. I listen to everything. But one of the best shows I ever saw at Medina Entertainment Center it's a so. Do you remember the the country band Blackhawk from like the early nineties? They've got probably five or six songs that you'd recognize from the nineties. Pretty big. But then they out. also have a band with a lot of the same the same lead singer Henry Paul called the Outlaws. It's like a southern rock kind of thing from the late seventies, early eighties, and they do like half the show is Blackhawk, and then half the show is the Outlaws. And I caught the guitar pick. I, he threw a guitar pick into the audience. I caught the guitar pick. It wasn't intended for you. No, it clearly wasn't. I, I, I think it was for someone else. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it was for you. I think you stepped in the blonde and jumped behind around. me. The blonde yeah. behind I think you me was jumped around, to... Phil. He's probably like, you son of a. It, it had his like... phone number on it, too. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's super weird. Yeah. 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 Room number. It's, gonna, it's like we know when, when the adult catches the home run ball and he should give it to a child or a kid. And Phil is just like, there's a 
he was like, no, I'm not giving this guitar pick away to the to yeah. the blonde that it was attended for from <laughs> from the lead guitar. I caught his room key. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll bring some beers up later. It'll be great, Henry. <laughs> See you, Henry. <laughs> Anyways, uh, here's how Write That Down works. Three predictions from everybody each week. They must be quantifiable. Those are the parameters. We keep track of batting averages and home runs. And listeners, if you want to be like Christian and participate as a guest listener predictor, you can send Declan a message through the Score North app. There's a feedback tab. Let's start with Judd's accountability here. Yeah, yeah. A lot of red. You said somebody from the Live Tour would win the Masters. Jim Nance, Jim Nance put the dagger in that one. His, his trolling comment, which I think was the top six, the top six uh, are all from the PGA Tour. Okay. Yeah, they, by the way, they barely, the production team barely showed any. Cam Smith was like top 10 all week. He was hunting. They showed like barely any Cam Smith. They begrudgingly started showing Bryson DeChambeau. On day two, they but then had, once yeah. he sort of faded on day four, it? they stopped showing Bryson. That was wild, pretty wild. You said Boston College would win the Frozen Four. <sighs> Denver goalie. Denver. Now the NHL season isn't over technically yet. There's like some like the Wild play what tomorrow against the Kraken. Yep. But like Connor Bedard, you have scoring thirty goals or more in his first season. He has twenty two right now. Yeah, he got Pro- hurt. He Pro- got hurt, and it screwed me. Marcus Felino would have 15 or more goals. I think he has like 12 or 11. Yeah, is... he, got, he got hurt as 10? well. Yeah, no, 10 goals. Uh, like, this is yeah. not my fault. Yeah. I'm being screwed yeah. by the sports gods. But And this is a home run just based on it, it's a really early send down. Uh, you said Matt Walner would be sent down before today's write that down. I think the timing, you, you gave it a week. It's pretty rare that guys get sent down after like 30 at bats. And he was bad enough in those 30 that they and they need offense. Yeah. So we're going to give you a home All run right. on that. Okay, thank you. I feel better about myself. We'll start with the bad on me. Oh, the spirit of this parlay was spot on. I said, Will Zalatoris top 20, ding. Somebody would shoot 80 or worse on Thursday or Friday. I think two different people did. Ding, Friday. ding. Friday is one of the toughest days I've ever seen at yep. the Masters. And I said, Tiger would miss the cut. Ah. He made the cut, but then finished in last place among the the golfers he, that made the cut. Give yeah. And shot an 80. And which is he didn't make the cut. Give the damn guy a golf cart. I don't care it's at Augusta. Give this guy a golf cart. He can't walk. He would he refuse, walk, the, he he would refuse the golf cart, though. And I you don't care, what? Tiger. You're taking the golf cart. Take it. You know where? Use it. He belongs at one place for now. The, the starting thing with Gary Player, oh, wow. Nicholas, and Watson. Well, but the, the tough thing is, uh, on the first day or two, it. the first two days, he beat like some of the best golfers yeah. in the world by multiple strokes. But yep. it's the the fact that he only plays like five competitive rounds he a year. Yeah. He had Nichols a 930 like tee time, I think, yeah. on Friday. Or no, Friday he had to play two. He had, to play he had a 930 tee time on Saturday. Yeah. And he had to get up at 3.30 in the morning to do yeah. all of his therapy. You know get what, though? Damn cart. He qualifies as a guy who his greatness should be honored and revered i don't need to see him continue to try this though but he still thinks that he can win majors at this point. i'd really like to talk to him i'm sure you can probably send at him denny's a dm booth. on instagram i'll slide into a denny's booth and talk to him i said kevin garnett will show up to a timberwolves game in the regular season no. kaprizov would score 50 goals this year well he would need close five against the kraken tomorrow night so that close if it happens we'll revisit and then I said, Matt Walner will take a minor league at bat before the All-Star game. <laughs> he hasn't taken one yet, but he will probably today. Uh, listeners, Zach said Marco Rossi will break Kirill Kaprizov's rookie record of 52 points. He needs like 10 points or six points. Yeah, you're, you're good. Know, yeah, you're good. In the last game. Right there. Brock Faber currently has seven goals. We'll have at least 10 goals. This is Gavin's prediction. Again, if... Oh. if if there's a hat trick against the Kraken, we'll revisit. But... So close, so close. No, no. Declan, pretty good week here. We'll start with the bad. You said Rory will miss the cut. He did not. You said the Wolves would acquire a player in the buyout market who was a former NBA All-Star. But you did say, by this week's Write That Down, the Twins will have at least seven hits with runners in scoring position. They had like 10 or 11. Mm-hmm. Somewhere there. 
Tiger would make the cut at the Masters. The Masters. The Masters. And Byron Buxton would start at least 10 of the first 18 games in center field. He has done that. It's DHing on Wednesday afternoon, but I believe he has played in every game but maybe one this year. Yeah. And I think 11 or 12 games in center field and then a handful made of a phenomenal two made a phenomenal catch last night and damn near made two. Dude, he yeah. almost robbed that ball was like six feet over close. the wall and he almost yeah. robbed it. I don't I agree it wasn't fan interference, but I, I also agree if the fan isn't there, he probably comes closer to snagging that ball. Sure. Yeah, that's a stadium that's had some issues with that historically. Yes, they have. Isn't that well, Jeffrey Merrick well, back in 96? No. Was that the Yankee, Yankee stadium? stadium? The old Yankee Stadium. The, okay. Baltimore has. That so left better. field, uh, I'm sorry. I'm not into that. They think, I mean, it's so deep now, and that wall is so screwed up, like like where it comes together in left se- center, and there's the sudden, like, you just run into a wall running sideways. It makes no sense. I hate the redesign. Glad I we like got the old the, Camden Yards. Glad we got Camden Yards. The Camden Yards ranting. I love Camden Yards. Chest. It's one of my favorite places, and I don't like what they've done. Again, no one consulted me. Declan leads with a 393 average this season. The season runs from Super Bowl to Super Bowl. Listeners with a nice start, 375. I'm at 345. Judd, 269. But Judd leads with three home runs. Declan and New myself Judd. with two, Steroid listeners Judd. with one. Judd also celebrating his 40th career home hey. run. Yep. And write that yep. down. Yep, and I am juicing. <laughs> Brady Anderson, Jermaine Dye. I'm not saying they juiced, but their home run production really picked up. That's what Zolgaz is doing. So congrats to Judd's 40th home run. He's still 16 behind me all time. I have 56 home runs. Our listeners have 56. I'm sorry. I have uh, 48. Declan with 38 home runs. Let's get Christian in here. He is our guest listener, predictor. It's been a couple years since we've had Christian on the show to make predictions. What's new with you, Christian? A lot has changed since last time. Um, so I got out of the military back in December. Um, I'm currently a commercial pilot. Now that's that career change. Uh, I'm in Jacksonville right now. I'm actually doing uh, in dock, which is like the first day of HR for a new airline. And I did I just finished my drug test. I was like, hey, I got an appointment at 11. <laughs> and I got a packet to turn in. The HR text me. He's like, hey, what time are you coming? I was like, I have an appointment at 11, maybe between 1 and 2. I'll let you know. <laughs> so so you're, we're not, not, not going to get you in trouble with HR right now, are we? We're good? Uh, no, they're not. They're not. They're, uh, what is it, um, Jacksonville fans. They're not. You know, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to But, yeah, out. no. I no, love how I, we're I, like we're an appointment on Christian's calendar yeah, here. Yeah, I'm, I'm on an appointment right now. Like, I pull in to charge the card. I was like, I, that's my excuse. I'm charging the card to get to the to the office. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, man. Nice. So, well, um, we'll, we'll, we'll start the predictions up here, but um, it's good to have you back on the show. And well, let, me you, uh, let me tell you about the Seth story before. Uh, yeah, dude. Continue, because it, yeah. it relates to me buying the, the you guys jacket. Oh, the before I, the before yeah. I die uh, I got, swag. I literally brought like my jersey and everything and I couldn't get it. Is it Hawkinson? Doing, yeah, it's, it's Hawkinson. Right before he got the contract, too. My oh, first look at that, official dude. jersey. Really glad he overcame that ear infection, by the way, to be able to right. sign the contract. I, and... I was scared. I was like, man, I just bought a hundred thirty-five dollar jersey, and this guy is not signing. <laughs> and then my si- on the same day, my sister, my twin sister, bought a, a, a Cook jersey and a JJ. So, and they were oh. all angry when when Cook got released and everything. I was like, you should have went with TJ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, sad story is, um, so day one or like the first draft party that you guys made, I was in the army, right? I put my leaf form. If it was approved, I'm going to Minnesota from South Carolina. Let's do it. It got canceled like a week before. So I was like, all right, oh. maybe next year. Next year, I was that, that year was I, was I was on write that down, I think. And I was like, all right, back to Minnesota. I'm gonna put my packet. They give me a thumbs up. Same thing. I was a drill sergeant, so they're like, hey, psycho picked up, whatever, blah blah blah. You need to come to work. This year, I'm like, hey, I'm not in the army. I can do things on my own. I can do whatever I want. I literally made my family is flying from Puerto Rico. My sisters are flying from Virginia. I got friends coming from Indy. So we all made a big ass group. I got all the tickets. I got like 20 tickets. I was like, all right, let's go. And I'm the one <laughs> falling out of the plan. No. Because I start flying next Tuesday. Oh, <laughs> Christian, dude. God, the timing. I suppose it'd be a little questionable if you like whatever plane you're flying, if you just like, you know, 
flew it to Did Minneapolis instead. They probably <laughs> probably have a problem with that. But wow. Yeah, I like yesterday I, I was talking to HR. She's like, hey, we want you to start like right, we we're good. Let's do the paperwork. We want you to start next week. And I was like, all right, how can I ask this question? I give it. I give uh, it. So <laughs> the, the, the Vikings are drafting a quarterback. Yeah. And, uh, what about the where week you, after? Where do you want me to start? And she's like, early years Tuesday. I was like, nope, no more Minnesota. Oh, <laughs> so are your friends and family still gonna oh, show up? Or? Yeah, they're all going. They're all going. Okay. To party. They, they're gonna have a Puerto Rican flag and everything. So give them a shot. Oh, that's everybody. awesome, dude. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll know who to look for then, and yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe one of these days we can get you up here for, for right. a watch party or a draft party, man. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I I definitely a watch party for sure. I, I I go. I make it a point to go to Minnesota once a year for a game, a home game. Yeah. So. We should also. So you you're a former drill sergeant. You said. Yeah, yeah, we should do like we should like have a segment where we bring Christian on, and if like somebody with the Vikings or the for the franchise needs a talking to, that we bring <laughs> we bring Drill Sergeant Christian in to tell someone, hey, shape up, <laughs> soak it up, move forward. Ed or we could have him just talk to Judd Ed in Ingram. a condescending. Ed, Ed yeah. Ingram, I want Ed. you to talk to Ed. 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 You're a, you're a second round draft pick. <laughs> Oh, man. amazing! Man. But yeah, that's that's my story, man. I bought the, the jacket, and the sweatshirt, and everything. I had, like plans. I saved my money. And I was like, all right, Minnesota, it is. And I got family up there too, so it was gonna be, you know, a reunion too. So yeah, I'm the one falling out well, of the plans. Well, we'll make it happen. At least we can get you on. Write that down here today on uh, on the OG version. But let's we'll, we'll start with you, Christian, since uh, you've got the floor here. You start with your first prediction, then we'll go over to. Judd to Declan will round it out with me. Three trips around the room. And obviously you can make Vikings predictions or on this show you can make any Minnesota sports predictions or any prediction about anything really. So the floor is yours, man. Yes, sir. So I had a lot of draft party predictions that I changed last minute. <laughs> I had one where it was like, regardless of where the Vikings are going to pick in or who they pick, whatever, there's going to be a negative atmosphere <laughs> at the draft party on Bedline. I mean, that you can be... still make that prediction. You know, I it's. Just, I, I, but I wanted to enjoy that. I wanted to enjoy the prediction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just so, <laughs> soak in the. He yeah, wants to give, give, him the, give him the ding live on yeah. the, exactly, the stage. Exactly. But so, so I got to shift it. I'm, I'm going to work my end of season, work my way back to like this weekend. Um, so my long term goal here. So regardless of who JJ is starting for next year, either traded or backings. I think he has a point to prove the contract. You know, he's going to get paid too much, right? I mm -hmm. think he's going to go off. He's either going to win the MVP or come in second place next year. So oh, okay. dude. Wow. LFD. I think he has well, a point. If he goes for 2,000 yards, I would think – I almost feel like that might be a prerequisite for a wide receiver to win the MVP mm -hmm. is, is yeah. go off for 2,000 yards. Because the problem is, like, as a wide receiver puts up huge numbers, then the quarterback the that's quarterback. throwing him the ball would be – but the other way to do it would be like if there's two different quarterbacks and he gets to like 2,000 yards somehow. My idea which, was that because he's a rookie quarterback, the rookie just qualifies for the rookie awards. Yeah. And then maybe J.J. would still get the MVP. If, mm. if that, and the perception that. would be that J.J. is the one that sort of carried yeah, this rookie. Yeah, the rookie gets the rookie of the year credit, but like J.J. was the, the real straw during the drink. Right okay. Down. Judley. All right, I'm going to, it's probably ill-advised, but I'm going to show some faith in the local basketball team. The Timberwolves will beat the Suns in the first round of the playoffs. Oh, look at this, dude. I, I'm just shocked just by this. <laughs> Off the record, I think it goes six or seven for sure. It it, it probably goes the, the distance if they do it, but you know what? What the hell? What the hell? I'm I'm gonna go with my th theory that that the wolves actually did not unveil some of their plans on Sunday, and I think that they I think they're gonna try and throw mm. some curveballs at the Suns, and uh, I also don't I'm also big on I don't those because these teams are pretty close. I I'm not convinced that being swept in the regular season when teams are r relatively close is the death that people think. Yeah, I think it's the way in which they were swept that's right. unsettling. It's like right. the fact that they were – I don't think they came within – they might have gotten it down to nine on Sunday, but it was like they were day. down double digits they got the one entire – They there down too as well, but they got handled it. Yeah. 
I think Alan Horton had the note. Like it was like 22, 14, and 19 were the first quarter leads for the Suns in yeah. all three yeah. of those games. So like they've gotten off the hot starts and the Wolves just never have been able to claw back. Yeah. Yeah. So optimistic Judd making an appearance. I'm going to try. Declan? I'll make a Wolves one too. Write this down. The Wolves win game one against the Suns. Sniping. And, <laughs> and Anthony Edwards drops at least 30 points. Okay. So win game one. And Anthony Edwards drops at least mm. 30 points. Write it down. Boy, this is... So my my first prediction was the Wolves will win game one and the series. And I feel like I could still make still that make prediction. Yeah. yeah, you're fine. I feel like it's... Uh, okay. I'm not going to deviate. I'm not going to let... Okay. I'm not going to let you guys, the Phoenix Suns, push me off my game here. So the Wolves will win game one. They will make an adjustment or two or will get just a better version of... The uh, the regular Timberwolves and they will win the series against okay. the Suns. Right like now, I like okay. It. Back to Christian here. Right this you guys all stand my my prediction. That's gonna be like literally my <laughs> Timberwolf prediction. So I'm gonna add to it since okay. we are in the Timberwolf little prediction time. So they will win the series, and they will not lose any games at home. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So I think I think the I, I went to a Target Field game uh, uh a Target Center game and. That place is wild. Yeah, it is. Great. This year it was wild. So I think it's, I think they got what it takes to to win all the home games. It, until they build a new arena and price out some of the more blue collar fans, it mm -hmm. it does feel like because it's. I mean, you can even you can get the secondary market. You can get in the arena as of yesterday for like fifty two dollars before fees on StubHub. Mm -hmm. So it's it's affordable. You can get in for a playoff game. Affordable. Um, I agree. Yeah, it's loud. It's been a blast it's all year. Loud. Yeah, it, it was loud. I went there for a mini tight ticket appreciation night, and that place was rocking. It was pretty loud. Yeah, I think it's a little bit like Golden State was mm -hmm. before, before they, the... they moved and priced everyone out. <laughs> but now it's like only billionaires in the yeah, first yeah. three rows of oh, that arena. God, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, Judd. Write this down. All right. Um, Caitlin Clark will break the WNBA rookie scoring record of average points per game. And just for a point of reference, it was set in 2006 by Simone Augustus of the Lynx, 21.9. So she will break the league rookie scoring record when it comes to average points per game by exceeding 21.9 points. Okay. Be pretty, pretty solid first little season there for, for Caitlin Clark. A lot of people, this, this is probably a subject for another day, but like the WNBA salaries have been going around, like her <laughs> rookie scale salaries. This is a new? And yeah, it's, but it's, I think what's great is because the solution is more people need to watch and support the WNBA, more eyeballs, more right. purchasing of merchandise, Which more is purchasing of tickets is going to get lead to a bigger TV deal, more revenue. Yeah. So maybe maybe Caitlin Clark and some of the other young players are what like Magic Johnson and yep. Larry Bird were to the NBA 45 years ago. Absolutely. But it's like I think the fact that people are noticing and are outraged about it is good. Like it's this is the way it's been for 25 years, but the reason why is because they don't draw the revenue that other sports do. But Caitlin Clark might be the one that helps well, elevate ratings and elevate merchandise and everything. And Cheryl, if you don't tank this season, Paige. I would I, I would make changes. If I'm Glenn, I say, you tank or you're fired right now. I will fire everyone I have to yeah. so that we yeah. win about three games. And think if they had gotten Clark. They got off to a bad start. They were in a perfect position. They were like 0-6, make... right? I know. Just let it happen. Instead, it's like, we're going to fight back. It's like the she's... Wild a couple nights ago. That's we Cheryl Reeve. Things. Screw she's you. She's too prideful. She's too good of a coach to let that I, happen. Oh, my God. Yes, you got to get Paige, the hometown kid. And by the way, you, Caitlin and Paige basically are the same age. And Paige, for a long time, was the star of that class, not Caitlin. I think Paige is the better overall player, and I think you're going to see that in the WNBA. Look at that. We're talking WNBA. This is good. I know. <laughs> okay, right. Declan, what's your next prediction? Uh, I'll do a Twins one here. I want a home run. Write this down. The Twins offense will score at least 10 runs in two different games by next week's. Write that down. Oh, wow, dude. We're going to get an offensive surplus here. Don't care how it happens. I don't care if they lose. Well, I will care if they lose the games. But in terms of my write that down prediction, yeah. they will score at least 10 runs in two different games by next week's. Write that down. Okay. All right. 
I see you. I see you, Dex. Game one against the Tigers, they scored 11 and a bunch of them in extras, right? Mm -hmm. On Saturday? Mm -hmm. And they have the White Sox for Monday and Tuesday for part of this prediction. So that that could also that could, that could happen in both of those games. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. All right. Okay. okay. Uh, write this down. Write this down. Kevin Garnett will show up to a Timberwolves playoff game <laughs> this year. I could see it being a road game, by the way, okay, because yeah, I was I, say, I, cause I don't I don't think Glenn's going to be traveling to like Phoenix or they could play. Is it the Nuggets or the Lakers in the second round? OK, so I don't know where I I, it, I don't know that he's comfortable showing up to Target Center until Glenn is gone. But I could see because he lives in L.A. What if they play? the? What if the Lakers upset the Nuggets and they wind up playing easily. the Lakers? He could show up. He could show up at that arena. Right. Easily. But he will show up to okay. a Wolves playoff game. Okay. Write this down. All right, back to Christian for his third and final. All right, so my final one, Vikings related. It was like a couple months back when they, we were going through the schedule, and Declan said the joke about Kirk playing his ex girlfriends, like to, in a couple of weeks. So I'll make a reference of that. Um, so Alana will lose uh, all the ex girlfriend games next year. So Commanders, Vikings. Yep. Okay. And Michigan yep. State. I think the Falcons play Michigan Dallas. State, too, yeah. <laughs> Does, I hate Kirk Cousins. I'm glad. And Holland know. High School. They play Holland High School. Do the Cowboys School. count? Zim. Zim across the way. Oh, yeah. That's oh. the one. I was looking for the third team. Yesterday. Okay. And I was like, well, in the Cowboys. Yeah, include the Cowboys. So the okay. o, they're going to go 0-3 in the ex-girlfriends games. Oh, dude. Yes. Oh, wild, Zimmer man. just going to blitz, blitz, and blitz. Oh, 100%. Bar. He's going to fluster him. You're going to see the T grinding and all that. It's Double crazy. A gap, up the middle pressure. Micah Parsons, no fewer than two roughing the passer calls because of the bounty <laughs> that the Cowboys, off the record, are going to put on Kirk. I mean, Mike Zimmer legitimately is go he's going to want to make – because in his mind, he feels like Kirk – directly or indirectly, was the reason for his downfall, right? He never wanted the contract. He never wanted Kirk. I think directly. Yeah, I think you're right. And and he's going to put <laughs> – he's probably preparing right now for that game, right? He's just sitting in a room 120 he hours a week. the game like Kirk Cousins last year. Oh, we <laughs> oh, circled yeah. the commanders again, right? They circled the Cowboys. Commanders. Oh, yeah, he probably sure. circled it like a thousand times. Bro. <laughs> like, like he's, it's like man, Rocky Four. He's got the picture of Ivan Drago, or in this case, Kirk Cousins, on his mirror. He wakes up in the morning, crumples it every morning, puts a new one up. So, I well, see, Christian, I can see his interview going like, like Seymour's interview, being like, "Do we play the Commanders this year?" Okay, I'm, I'm in. I want to. I'm in. Job. Yeah. <laughs> He's just interviewing with all the teams on their on their schedule. Uh, so, well, Christian, great stuff. Great having you on. Uh, we're gonna miss you at the draft party, but since you've got this platform right now, is there anyone you'd like to thank that helped you get back to this pinnacle moment on Write That Down? First of all, thank you guys again for hosting me. Um, I love the online community. I love, you know, it's Colonor and PD. It's great. I'm like a fanatic. The online community comes out like a minute later. I'm watching it and laughing my, my butt off. Um, and my family, you know, people are going to the draft party. Enjoy it. My family's going to FaceTime me and I'm going to be here in Jacksonville flying. And hopefully I get a break so I can watch it. And yeah, and then I'm hoping the Vikings get a quarterback and we get a, we get to see a Super Bowl before I die, you know, because now I'm yeah. flying. I could I could die tomorrow. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> Don't tell that to HR though. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, if, or if there's passengers. <laughs> Yeah, for real. Yeah, ladies yeah, don't, and gentlemen. Don't we'll say that on the intercom. Or, yeah, we could all die. Who knows? <laughs> We're all just specks of off. dust. We're all just specks of dust in this universe, though, so it doesn't matter. So, Christian, great well, stuff, you. man. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming like on, dude. Thank you. Thanks, Christian. All right, boys. Hey, before we make our final trip around the room here, our friends at Dennis Kirk are back for another summer here. Mm. Dennis Kirk, that's... Mm. <laughs> That's what motorcycles sound like. Uh -huh. Judd's yep, got yep. you covered. I, I got some backup. I, I got some noise for you. Some backup noises. Go to DennisKirk.com to check out over 185,000 parts, apparel, and accessories for motorcycles, ATVs, UTVs, dirt bikes, snowmobiles, and more. All the top brands. Same day shipping on orders placed before 8 o'clock Central Time are shipped the same day. And free shipping on all orders over $89. Also, financing is available as low as 0% for up to 12 months. Our friends at Dennis Kirk are back here uh, to help you during writing season. DennisKirk.com. Okay. Write this down. Final trip around the room here, Judd. Okay. Um, the best golfer in the world currently is not done. No, 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 he's not done. 
Scotty Scheffler will win another major this season. At Some least people are saying he's he's got a shot major. at the at the Tiger Slam. Yeah, I don't know about that, but he definitely he definitely has a shot. I think at one of the remaining majors. So Scotty Scheffler will win one more. Can you tell I watched golf for for four yeah. days straight? It's a blast, I, yes. man. Golf's yes. great. It's a lot of fun. Big yeah, it was. It was uh, that Friday round was incredible. My God, I think I would have died out there. You guys were having a hard time just standing up over their tee shots. It was so windy. Uh-huh. It was crazy out there. Write this down. Okay. Declan. All right, uh, last one for me. Uh, I will make this prediction. Uh, Phil, I even texted you about it, I think, last week. But write this down. Roman Reigns will be off WWE television until at least SummerSlam. Hmm. I think I think he's going to be off for a while here. Now, if he shows up at SummerSlam, this still counts, by the way. Like, I have SummerSlam and on. That's when we'll see Roman Reigns. So if he shows up at any time between now and before SummerSlam, this will be incorrect. But I don't think we're going to see our Tribal Chief for a little while. I think he's going to take... Uh, some time off and as much as i still do acknowledge my tribal chief uh i don't think we're gonna see roman reigns yes my tribal chief bit. anything my tribal chief what can i do my tribal good chief? old joe good old joe from georgia tech as i call him yeah just hanging out at vikings offseason camps just trying to keep up i, I saw people clowning the vikings because it was they they put out the thing that say we acknowledge our tribal chief for night two of wrestlemania a few weeks ago and then he loses the wwe title and everyone classic. was like classic minnesota vikings you acknowledge roman reigns and he loses the biggest match of obviously uh of his career classic i think they did something they acknowledge did they acknowledge Paige beckers too did yeah, they put they out something her in like an AP jersey? She yes, had an AP right. jersey as a little, as a little kid. kid. Beat by the. I understand what we're doing, but maybe let's let's sit the next big event out. Yeah. If you're the Viking, let's <laughs> I just felt sit really the next old too. I felt really mm. old because she's okay. probably like in first grade there, and I'm like, I was covering those teams. Yeah, I'm gonna make a home run prediction here. Write this down. I think Trevor Larnick understands the gravity of this promotion. This is, he's a former 20th overall pick, right? He's a first round pick. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 20th overall, 2018. He's now 27 years old. He's had a bunch of stop starts going back the last four seasons. And Matt Walner's slow start opens the door. This offense needs a boost. There's a wide open corner spot if you want it. So I'm going to say Trevor Larnick hits at least two home runs between now and next week's write that down. Okay. I think he's going to take advantage of the opportunity early here. He's going to be ready. And this is kind of it, man. Like if you don't this perform now, it's it. like just to be just to be clear too, um when when it comes to my guy Walner, I got some notes on, well you hate him, you've given I'm not giving up on him. I think he'll get himself turned around. He just needed to go down. And And it wasn't just the first right. 3 weeks of the season. It was all of like he literally it's a body of work. Spring Correct. training doesn't matter. Well, if you're not an established player and you can't get a hit in spring training for a month and a half, and then you start the season doing nothing for three weeks, right. you don't have a track record to just stay Correct. up for three or four months. And it's a big di- difference is if, if you pull the, the old Aaron Hicks, right? Where you go nuts in spring training and then the season starts and they pitch you differently. And you're like, okay, I, I'm in trouble. I feel like, yeah, I feel like with a young player, you can't just say, well, he was terrible, but he'll get it turned around opening day. Yeah. Like, it's different if you're a veteran, because then you're literally working on stuff. Matt Walner was not trying to hone his strikeout. <laughs> I got to find out how I can strike out more often. Hold on a second here, Rocco. Watch this. You know, you could take, uh, you could take a pitch on a full count. That's how you could you could strike great, out more one, often. One of the, no, that was awesome. One of the <laughs> hidden highlights in Score North history, in my opinion, was the confusion. And then Ploof checking in with Jeffers in Baltimore via text to Jeffers refute. Like, what the hell are you talking about? I can't. Uh, nothing. Don't worry about it. I can't wait to bring this up to Jeffers on when I see him. This I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up to him this week and be like, hey, so when you got that weird text from Trevor Ploof on Tuesday morning, that's my bad. That was from me, Dude, basically. That was- but it's also like the it fact that the fact that Farmer spent spring training taking a pitch on a full count is also weird. I'm still confused. Why would you wait? What what benefit does that? Well, I can see tracking pitches, but you can you know track what? pitches all day long, like in batting practice. Dex can go ask him. Why? Hey, man. Yuck it up with Jeffers. And, what are and we doing here? To, and he's going to say, "I have no idea what you're talking about." Yeah, I don't, and I don't get the. 
promise. I don't. I don't get the vibe that like Farmer is one of the more fun guys to talk to in 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 the locker room. Well, only one way to find out. I've There's heard good things one about him. Way to figure out. Yep. I've heard good things about him. Have you? Okay. Yeah. No, I think he's fine. Yeah. Okay. Business like, but I think he's fine. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Until yeah, if you, you missed say this. if you missed yesterday's Score North Twin Show, which by the way, thank you guys for getting, getting us to uh, 2,500 subscribers this week on the Score North Twin Show YouTube channel. It's our third YouTube channel here: Purple Daily, Score North, and Score North Twin Show. But uh, yeah, Tuesdays with Trevor has been a blast, and go check out the episode yesterday if you haven't. If you have no idea what we're talking <laughs> about here, <laughs> the confusion that <laughs> reigns supreme. Yep. So, all right, there it is. You write that down, predictions, your down. accountability session here. And don't forget a uh, Purple Daily edition of Write That Down if you haven't checked that one out as well. And we'll see you guys on this podcast tomorrow for a little Reckless Speculation Thursday with Doogie.